Hi. Hi. How's it going? Yo. I'm Necrotic Nick. I'm Jammin' John. Jovial Joseph. Subject to change. I'm the Tommy. And we're Thralls of Metal, and we're going to do another discography ranking. This time we're doing Brazilian metal band, legendary fucking band, Sepultura. One of my personal favorites. start at pretty much the beginning in 1986 with Morbid Visions. Yeah. Yep, their first album God awful production. Terrible production. Guitars horrible. were not in even, tune. even for 1986, it was pretty bad. I mean, we had some really young boys in Sepultura at this time. Oh yeah, you had the only appearance by Yaro Wedis. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. It was it was barely even thrash metal, honestly. It was it was a lot of worship and tribute for like Celtic Frost and Venom. Yeah, maybe a little bit of Slayer. But Slayer. Sorry. That has to be done every time someone says Slayer. Slayer! There we go. Damn it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> but um, very straightforward, simple song structure. A lot of the songs kind of blended in together. Not particularly high on my list. I had it at 13 out of their uh, 14 album. I had Morbid Visions at number 10. Number 12 for me. Also number 10 for me. You know, it was uh, there was a lot of really good drums on this album. The album came in just thrashing, like it was a good first attempt. You could, it was obviously their their intro into music. Yeah. Very makeshift production too. Like I mean, they didn't have a real studio to really work in. As bare bones as it ever got. And it's interesting because this is the only album they had like a kind of satanic occult theme. Like the rest of the time, they shifted more towards socio political stuff. And like personal demons, but this one was about actual demons. Satan's and oh, yeah, I mean, all can, the Satan's you, can, you can handle, brother. Multiple, multiple Satan's, multiple, multiple Satan's, Satan's. <laughs> all the Satan's, Satanists, six hundred and sixty-six Satan's. Yeah, there was also the Bestial Devastation EP that came out before this, but everything that was on that ended up on Morbid Visions anyway, which is why we're not covering that one. It's it's okay. I had a couple of decent tracks like. Uh, War, Troops of Doom. Troops of Doom was great. Empire of the Damned was pretty good. You can even say it was ar like arguably influential to death metal, too, since this was just a year after Scream Bloody Gore came out. Mm -hmm. and it was a lot like Possessed Seven Churches, which was also pretty influential in that genre. And uh, 1987, they have their second album, Schizophrenia. This one I had a lot higher. Uh, this one was uh, number five for me. Number nine for me? Number nine for me as well. I nine. had this one at number five. I thought it was a killer album. Yeah, it's definitely more thrash. This is the first one with Andreas. In Walks Mr. Kisser. Yeah. Yep, and instantly it's, songwriting improved. Yes. Right away. 100%. And they're still really young, you know. Igor was 17. Max was 18 years old. Yeah. Great for being so young. Vocals were a lot clearer from Max this time. Production was noticeably better. Still not great. But not nearly as muddy or... No. <clears throat> Andreas added to the songwriting instantly. Like, you could tell he was more into melodic stuff like he loved uh, Iron Maiden, Angel Witch. He brought on that, you know, new wave of British heavy metal thing. And... Uh, the melodic it just, side. It just became more polished. Better lead work. Like, Inquisition Symphony is probably my favorite instrumental they've done ever. It's it's an incredible song. The song that stood out to me was definitely From the Past Come the Storms. Awesome song. Great song. Escape to the Void. That was still a live staple for a long time, too. All right. Beneath the Remains. 1989. Look 
This one is my number two album. Uh, this is a thrash classic, in my opinion. Much better songwriting, much better song structure. Best production so far. Yeah. yeah. Well, they actually got close. Scott Burns, who was a part of the whole Florida death metal scene. He kind of learned how to record that stuff because it was a little difficult with all those different layers. He actually went down to Brazil to help them out. And even brought in the frontman from Atheist and John Tardy. I have this album ranked number three. Pretty high on the list. Four for me. And at number six. Igor sounded incredible on this one. Like, you could really tell that kid was getting good. And once again, the lead work got even better. Songwriting was incredible on this. Like, this has some of their most memorable songs. In my oh, opinion. yeah. Agreed. Mass Hypnosis. Inner Self. Those songs have Mass Hypnosis. <laughs> They've right. always stood out to me as, you know, really important Sepultura songs. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 1991, we have Arise. This is my number one album. This is probably one of my favorite thrash albums ever. I would even hold this over like other thrash classics, even Master of Puppets. Crucify me, go ahead. <laughs> You're wrong, but it's okay. No, I'm right, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, actually, some of my favorite production they've had, uh, once again, this was Scott Burns, they actually went to Florida to Morris Sound Studios where tons of metal classics were recorded in the 90s. And it just sounds everything. The guitars are perfectly crunchy. The drums sound fucking immaculate. There's a lot more tribal oh. going that goes on. In comes the Latin percussion. Yep. And they to give it that Brazilian feel. It almost like they're starting to put their own personal stamp on yeah, it. Definitely. And they added a touch more groove and melody this time uh, to where the songs actually stood out individually. Like they had tons of memorable parts. Like Beneath the Remains had tons of memorable songs, but it stuck to that really fast yeah. pace throughout. This one broke it up a bit and brought in just an incredible song ring. Like, Desperate Cry, probably one of the best Sepultura songs of all time. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Man. However, I've said this once, I'll say it a hundred times, the cover of Orgasmatron. It was a B-side, and <laughs> it's a dumb song anyway. Wait, why? Was... You covered a dumb song and still kept it <laughs> dumb. I mean... I I mean, I think Lemmy was proud at least. <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah. Arise to me is an amazing album. I have it ranked at number two. It's always been one of my favorite thrash albums as well. I'm not going to say it's better than Master of Puppets, but it's definitely one of my favorite thrash albums. God damn it, man. No, don't high. Don't you fucking high five. I mean, pointed it at you too. Next fart's coming in your direction for that. Yeah. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. Great album. That was my number four. I had this more towards the middle, and I'll explain why as we get into the other albums that I liked a little bit more than this. All right, well, we'll move on to 1993 with This one's number three for me. My number one. Also my number one. Also my number one. I love the shit out of this record. <laughs> I've listened to this record so many times, it's stupid. That it's it's almost been nonstop on my playlist since it came out. Yep. There's songs that get stuck in my head all the time. Every song fucking stands out individually on this. And there's you know, once again really good instrumental parts. Um like the Keros or Keros, oh, the little acoustic mm -hmm. control. It's all of it stands out really well, and all these songs are strong on their own too. Propaganda is what got me into heavier, faster metal. That just driving double kick in that song from the rip. Yeah, this song Nomad is a perfect song, beginning to end. I love it. I still I'll play it out of nowhere all the time. I just I love that song so much. Amen. Right. Amen's one of my favorites on there. This one was arguably they kind of moved from thrash metal more to groove metal. And this is, I mean, going on different metal forums, this one's a really divisive album. Like, there's people who legit hate this album. And they're all they're wrong. Stupid. Yeah, they're wrong. <laughs> but, you know, this one caused a bit of a divide in the fans because, you know, thrash metal was kind of on its way out and this was what was taking its place. And it was arguably more accessible, even though I think this was even heavier. 
and more raw in a lot of aspects compared to at least the previous two. I mean, it was definitely a big change from Arise, no doubt about it. There's still thrash elements, but it's not as thrash forward as their previous albums. The production was a kick up. It was yeah. heavier in parts. The only reason it's number three for me is because I'm a bigger thrash fan. I love old school thrash, but this is one of my favorite albums in general. Like, honestly, this is probably one of the best groove metal albums that ever came out. Yeah. I have it on cassette. I never had this on cassette. I have the, I have the original pressing on wow. cassette. I'm probably the least biggest Sepultura fan out of all four of you guys, and if I ever have a hankering to listen to Sepultura, this is the first album I put on, just to just to get a fix. You know. All right, well, let's move on to 1996 with Roots. All right, new metal fucking crept in, and we have Roots, which fell to number seven, despite I had, like, this old-school love for it. it. It also fell to number seven for me, for me. In fact, when we started this thing, before we started jamming all the Sepultura records, this was closer to, like, number one or two. It, but then it fell. I have this low as an 11. I didn't have the nostalgia factor. Jonathan Davis and Mike Patton could not save it. That's my least favorite track. Oops! Bloody poops. I, I can't stand look away. That I, I skip that every yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And even on even on when it appears on Blood Rooted, it's still bad. No. You can't you can't remix and save that album for writing's trash. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm with Joe on this one. I have this ranked at number eleven. You know, I listened to this album a lot when I was younger and I remember liking it more when I was younger, but coming yeah. back to it, it definitely fell in the ranks it's big time. It's super fucking long too. Like I think it's like almost seventy five minutes. Like that's that's too long, especially when a lot of the material isn't like wide ranging. Like I love I love the percussion on it because Igor is fucking yeah, amazing. Always has been. But you know the songwriting just kind of it, it turned into new metal. It was just down tune yeah. and fucking muddy and a lot of squealy shit. It felt like a much simpler. No solos, album. like almost no solos except for just squealing noise, which I'm sure trash. that trash. Yeah, trash. there you go. That's the, with the trash. guitarist amongst us yeah. should be upset. <laughs> <laughs> It just seems like they didn't try as hard, which was a bummer, because coming off of Chaos AD, you'd think it would have been a masterpiece. A step not, up, yeah. Not the other way around. It was ambitious in the sense they wanted to change the game, kind of, but at the same time, they wanted to follow suit with Korn. So, I mean, how ambitious was it? They still, well, they stayed with Rainforest Tribes to do, like, fucking, you know, tribal jams and shit like that. And it's like, hey, that's... As soon as you said that, I just thought of, like... Max getting stoned with like the world uh, or the wildlife foundation panda like oh dude we're gonna fucking save the rainforest man <laughs> yeah this is also their highest selling album too this was the big landmark one which just goes to show you how stupid we all were when new metal came out new metal kind of uh, I mean I loved it at the time but no it doesn't hold up so we're gonna move past this to 1998 with against This is the worst album they put out. Holy shit. Yeah, it's and dead last fire. for three out of four of yeah. us. Number yeah. 14. It's number 13. I... Derek Green's first album. I'm against it. I am 100% against oh it. Oh my God, I see what you did there. <laughs> there, there Definitely are, my number 14 here. <laughs> there are I did two not like this song. passable songs on this that I thought were okay, but the rest of them, uh, man, like, I, get, I get it. They were in a bind. Max left. Big split there. And he'd already signed up with uh, oh, Roadrunner cool. with uh, Soulfly. And Roadrunner obviously wasn't backing <laughs> Sepultura as much. Like, well, I don't even know what the hell they're doing now. <laughs> and clearly neither did they when you heard this album. Uh, Derek Green wasn't even involved in the writing process at all. Was, these songs were already written terribly for him. I was like, you, hey, right, there you go. Right. However, it was the first time that Andreas had to write a whole album's worth of, you know, material by himself. So, you know, there's yeah. going to be some... And he definitely, obviously, as the catalog keeps going, you know, he 
picked, oh, yeah. it, picked it back up. up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. just a little bit of a rough start considering, yeah. you know, the other main writing partner of Sepultura took off. It was a precarious position. Yeah. I mean, it, it was bad. I mean, the one thing I think that did come out of it that I did like is Derek Green. Derek Green has a much better vocal range. And now. Yeah, well, I mean, on this one, they weren't asking him to do much. Just this the one, parts they didn't ask anybody to do anything. You're doing <laughs> they're playing yeah. your fucking. Instrument. I thought the <laughs> vocals on this album were very cheesy. Oh yeah, you know they were more understandable than when Max was singing them, but they weren't as good. He's a much better lyricist too. Like Max, man, get with there's the language barrier and all, but not a lot of heady subject matter. You right? said head. I did, but yeah, this one. I mean, they tried to go away from tribal stuff and include Japanese percussion, which just felt. Little forced. It definitely felt like the follow up to Roots, which is why it fell so low on the list for me. Now, it, it's not a good album. Darkest At point all. in their, their history. I dreaded jamming this one again, and I dreaded listening to it the entire time. <laughs> in <laughs> fact, it, was a, it was tough to get through, and I'm yeah. not even going to lie. Some songs I started, and I'm like. <sighs> and I stopped, and I skipped. I fast forwarded through, tried to find. A decent part, and there wasn't one, and so I just stopped. It had been over a decade <laughs> since I had listened to this album. And you know and, why. Yep, and it'll be hopefully over a decade before I listen to it again. <laughs> 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 All right. We're going to move on to 2001 with Nation. Who decides to live for this world? Who decides to die for this world? More things to ways of execution. This is not a type of resolution. Another shit fest. Better shit fest, but still, it's not still great. Still a shit fest, this but one, a better shit fest than against. It's like cheesy shit right here. This one I had at eight. I thought it was an improvement over against, but that's not saying much. And it kind of felt like they want to take a bit of Chaos AD and sort of mix it with Roots so you still have the new Metal leftovers, even though at this point new Metal was really starting to die out. Thank fucking God. You know, uh, I had Nation at number 13. The drums were still decent. Yeah, like production, Igor's, great production. Great yeah, production. Igor's yeah. an amazing drummer, no doubt about <laughs> Igor's it. Igor's never a slouch. A lot of guest appearances. Once again, yeah. They just lost so much with Max for these, these couple albums. They were really trying to find... Their new groove. And this was this was their last album on Roadrunner. They were pretty much fulfilling their end of their contract there, and they had no support. There was barely any promotion for this. So, I don't know, maybe a lot of it was just dialed in because, like, all right, we're going to get a new deal, and we can write some fresh tunes after that. Right. Um, I did it at number 12. Yeah, it, it's, it's okay at best on my list. There's still some songs there I actually like. Ways of Faith, I think, is really good. Uh, Politrix, just because I like Jello on there. There's always room for Jello. Uma Kura is, is. I hate that song. It's a I cologne it. commercial, like, ladies, do you want to get noticed by your man? Uma Kura. Uma Kura. <laughs> you want to smell sexy? Uma Kura. Uma Kura. You want to smell like a Brazilian dumpster? Uma Kura. <laughs> Uma Kura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not the best point in their career, but I, I thought some of the songs were okay. That's why it was a little bit higher. All right. Moving on to 2003, we have Roarback. This one I don't have as high either. This was number 10 for me. I like Roarback. Number eight. This was number 11. Roarback for me was number 12. A lot of the songs of this just don't feel complete. Like, they end at points where you feel like they should, like, really pick up mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they felt like a lot of half ideas kind of thrown together, and uh, I don't I know, it just didn't stand out. I was just happy to hear them going back to metal after the last couple albums, and... Up to this point, it's Derek Green sounded the best. Vocal, yeah, his vocal performance. Agreed. I mean, Come Back so Alive far. comes in swinging, and I love that. Like right away, it's like okay, there's a little bit of still some thrash in yeah, here. Yeah, it's more. It's way less of the outside 
kind of you know the other worldly type music influence and just more straight ahead metal. And so that's this was paired with an EP, um, Revolu songs that I actually liked even better. That had just a series of cover songs they did that were really good, and, mm-hmm. uh, and I actually yeah. liked it better than this album because I don't know, just the originals didn't work for me. Like I thought the production definitely felt a lot thinner on this one. Like with Nation, it felt like full production. They really did a good job on this. This one felt like eh, maybe a polished demo. I know they were on a different label. They were on SPV for this one. It was their first album. That that's SPV Steamhammer. Yep. You know, so if you're into Sodom, that's their only label they've ever been on, I believe. It's not a great album. It it's okay. Be. It's middle of the, it's middle of the row. Meh. Uh, the standout song for me, Corrupted, was pretty good on this album. I like Godless, even though it just tails off the end where you feel like there could be more, because honestly, that was one of the strongest tracks starting off on there. Moving on to 2006, we have Dante 21. I bend it all for winter here In double bed runs amongst the lost It's the fiction of life What you are is what you love uh, Last album with Igor, shame But this one ranked really high for me yeah. uh, Number six Number five Number, where in the heck, uh, ten. Number ten. I had this one at number nine. This was the best album with Derek Green at this point. Agreed. And was their first concept album. They did essentially the divine comedy, uh, Dante's Inferno, traveling from hell to purgatory to heaven. And it really works. Like, the narrative carries Mm -hmm. out really well. And these songs kick ass on here, too. Yeah. And there's some cool things like the violin solo. Yeah. 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 The strings, the first time they brought in orchestral elements. uh, It was really good. Uh, Once again, Derek Green showed even more vocal range again. Very adventurous. Yeah. Convicted in Life. No no fucks given. (laughs) Stupid, awesome fucking jam. Convicted in Life had really good guitar work on that song. Like That one felt like it could have been on KSAD, too. Like Mm -hmm. It just had such a strong feel. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And then it carried out throughout the album, too. Buried Words was another standout track to me off this album. When it comes down to putting music like on my phone for uh, driving around and shit, I hate when an album's taken up by too many intro tracks. So that's a minor complaint, but... (laughs) You know, there's he is OCD like that. Yeah, folks. no, I am. <laughs> intro tracks drive me nuts, dude. Stop, <laughs> no. stop giving me like a minute and a half intro track into something that's also awesome. That's a waste. Just, of space, just give so. me the fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tease me, baby. Please me. I like the intros. You know, like the strings are cool. I'm a big prog dude too, man. So like, yeah. the weird, quirky little things like that, I dug it, man. Way to dig it. I okay. can dig it. <laughs> All right, moving on to 2009, we have Alex, or Alex. This is number 11. And uh, this was the first one without Igor. We have Jean Dolabella on drums, and he was okay on this one. A lot more polyrhythmic, but overall, it's not a great album. This is my number 14. I thought this record was a pile of shit. All the, <laughs> all the songs are too short. And there's there's some new metal-y shit again on there. And, like, dude, like, in 2009, new metal-y shit should not be popping up on an album, unless you're corn. And they're not. <laughs> I'm so glad they're not. I had this album at number eight. I didn't think it was as bad as Nuna did. Agreed. Um, I had it at number six, and also I thought there th- was. I liked the the whole Alex theme. See, I, I liked how they kept coming back to that. I thought I that think was they pretty sh- cool. They should have spaced out their concept albums because he had a really great concept album before this, and then this one, like Clockwork Orange, is an awesome literary piece, but it feels like a step down from Dante's Inferno. Like in terms of like heady subject matter sure. for a for a concept album. You know, I liked a lot of the contrast they had. There was a lot of doomy parts. There was a lot of really heavy parts, and I'm I really like doom a lot. So I like that they incorporated that. It was so short. Ludwig short. fucking Van though. That is the cringiest um, <laughs> Sepultura fucking moment ever. They should not have done that. No, because it was it, it wasn't even like legit like symphonic. <laughs> no. It was just someone hammering shit on the keyboard. Does that sound okay? Like. 
no. <laughs> cool, we're fuck it. <laughs> Listen, we're on a time crunch. Let's that's go. A, that's a keeper. <laughs> Moving on. Can you get your dog to come stand here for a minute? Yeah. 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 For all you care, this track could be John farting on a snare drum. Maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs> I would have listened to that over listening to Ludwig Van again. We can listen to it now if you like. No. Look, don't bang your dick on the snare drum and tell me it's a song, okay? <laughs> you liked it the first time we did it. It wasn't a snare drum, though. It was, <laughs> it was a hi-hat, man. It, it was a shroom drum. Uh, moving on to 2011, we have Keros. This one's a little bit better. Uh, I had it at nine. I had this at five. I liked it a little bit better. I really love the producer of this album, Roy Z, who's an awesome guitar player and a producer. Worked with Bruce Dickinson uh, a lot and uh, put out some badass Bruce Dickinson solo albums for him. So The production of this is pretty much flawless. I had this album at number six. You know, I thought Andreas really came in and killed this album. He came with lots of riffs, lots of leads. Um, some of his best leads yet that I think he's even had, especially since Max left. Andreas did a great job on this album. Um, very heavy, very brutal. I did number eight. Th this kind of fell when I was ranking this discography. It just kind of fell in there. Yeah, my issue with it is it's it's really cut and dry. Like, it's it's pretty bare-bones groove metal. Not that it's, like, bad, but it, none of the songs really jump out at you very much, but it's still well-executed. So, I mean, it's it kind of falls in the middle. Maybe oversimplified. Uh, lead work's still good. I do like their cover of Ministry is Just One Fix. It was a good ripper. There's also a surprise bonus track of them covering uh, the Prodigy's Firestarter, which is cringeworthy. Read the press shop. Yep. Yeah, just imagine that with the uh, sepulchre. I just remember a cockroach hair dancing in the sewer light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were cheesy. Whatever. Uh, last one with uh, Dola Bella on drums. He puts on a pretty pretty decent performance on this. I don't think they really were pushing much on this one. They just wanted to put on a metal album. Well, it was the first one on Nuclear Blast. They wanted to make a bit of a same as, like, hey, we can still write some solid tunes and... We'll just, we're I wouldn't be surprised if when they got signed, like, hey, we appreciate what you've done, but like, yeah. can we can we put out something heavy? Wait, about that concept album last time. We're going to have Ludwig to pass Banner, on you that. you fucking kidding? But uh, yeah, it's an okay album. We'll give it that. Moving on to 2013, we have, god damn it, I have to say this whole fucking thing, don't I? The mediator between the head and hands must be the heart. This one's number 12 for me. I'm not a big fan of it. Really? This yep. is my number three. I love this. This is my number shit two. Yeah, I did album. too. This was a great record. My number seven. I like Eloy's drumming. That dude's a fantastic drummer. Eloy Casagrande. I don't like Ross Robinson's production. Once again, it was kind of a, a new metal thing. I hate the guitar tone on this. The guitar tone sounds sloppy. Especially coming from Roy Z's production where that guitar sounded full. Roy Z is a very, he, he likes it crunchy. very crisp. Yeah, he's a crunchy man. This one just sounded dirty. And Sorry. like new metal dirty. They were try I think they were trying to recapture yeah. some of the Roots magic because oh, of, yeah. of the popularity of the album at the time. It wasn't a concept album but it was inspired by the Metropolis Metropolis the old silent film and if you're a YouTube rabbit holer you should know all about Metropolis and all the conspiracy oh, theories God. and all that good stuff uh, <laughs> come at me bro they can hear my eyes rolling I'm sure it, <laughs> standout it track to me on this album was Impending Doom I love the how it was so chaotic and doomy I liked uh, the Vatican uh, Tsunami I thought was pretty good Manipulation of Tragedy I thought was good uh, it just it feels cluttered like Songs they don't have room to breathe. They can I disagree. jump to the. I say the it's some part. of their best writing. I, I say it's, I say it's some of their best writing. From back to front, I'd say that from front to back, this is a great album. Sometimes I like chaos. <laughs> oh, me too. This one, it didn't, it didn't. It was stepping outside of their usual comfort zone, which is really cool. They actually tried that, but it had mixed results as far as 
my opinion was. Sure. And I like technical metal, too. I also that some of this is closer to death metal. Which is why I'm shocked it placed so low on your ranking. It just, like, the songs didn't gel. There weren't a lot of hooks on it. You know, I, I gotta have something that draws me in and wasn't quite enough here. Okay. All right, well. All right, well. Cool. Yep, let's go on to the last album. The last album. 2017, we have Machine Messiah. This one's my number four. Holy shit, did they write a great album. Number two, this number album is disgusting. Number three, I have it at number four. It's a beautiful album. This is the best one with Derek Green by far. Definitely shows off more of his vocal range again. Eloy kills it on drums. This is a fantastic drum performer throughout. And Andreas wrote just killer riff after riff. It's, it's <coughs> it, a beautiful album. I know it's the last one, but still, like, it sounds cliche to say, but I totally believe it is the best album with Derek Green on it. 100%. I totally agree. Doubt. And honestly, I think this is maybe uh, breathing new life into Sepultura. Like, pe the people really responded well to this yeah. one. Yeah. And I'm I'm eager to hear what they do next. I really dug this album. Yeah, there was blazing too. guitar all over the album. Yep. Yes. It was proggy, doomy. Uh, lots of good tracks. I am the enemy. Vandal's Nest. Oh. Chosen Skin. Or killer no. song. Cyber God. Cyber God, dude. Cyber God is, just is a rips. killer jam. Their it's instrumental iceberg heavy as balls. Iceberg dances. Yes. Oh, it was the, absolutely it, yeah. beautiful. I like the pacing on this album too. Like it, it, every song, they, they didn't clutter a song that sounded similar back mm. to back. Like all these songs really had a chance to stand out. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much the rundown of all their albums. We have wildly different lists in some parts, and yes. a lot of the same ones. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm kind of curious to know uh, what you guys thought of our lists, if you think we're right, wrong, and different. Once again, are we trash boys? Uh, let us know. Also, give us suggestions. If you want to hear certain bands, let's go down their discography and rank them. Let us know. Yeah. And stay tuned because the next discography we are doing is The Mighty Iron Maiden, and I can't fucking wait. Who? I've never heard of them. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> Give me my gun. <laughs> Thank you guys again for watching. If you'd go ahead and please leave us a like and a subscribe, that would be awesome because we'd like to keep doing this for you. Also, let us know whatever discographies you want to see us tackle next. Anything in metal we would love to do. Thank you so much. Godspeed.